As horror movies is one of Wes's main vent motifs, it seems to me that Wes Craven has developed quite a talent for horror movies. I for one can definitely agree with Wes Craven's stance that utterly fucking brutal scenes being extremely therapeutic to the eyes. And in 1984, he not only smashed through the box office, but also made a movie which I consider one of the greatest horror movies to have ever existed. That saying, A Nightmare on Elm Street is far from the only Wes Craven IP that I consider a incredible addition to the horror genre as a whole because there's another. On May the 2nd, 1996, Wes Craven will come out with another extremely well put together IP and that IP being Scream. Now Scream might be a complete and utter change of pace from the other horror movies he's done because of the formula. Scream, although without a doubt is a slasher movie in heart, there are certain elements which I think it makes it so it doesn't really take itself too seriously, then again, it's still surprisingly well put together. I mean, even though it doesn't have to be that scary, I mean, I never found Scream scary in the first place, but it's just this element that you are watching something that's really self-aware and it makes it so meta. It's the reason why I resonate with all the characters, especially the main antagonist. Regardless of if you like it or not, Scream ushered in a new age of slasher films and I really got a chance to actually get into the nitty gritty and explain exactly why I love the series even though I don't consider Scream very scary. Anyways, I'm Chuck Guan Ting, your resident horror fanatic, psychic, and Yuri Otaku. Let's get into the fucking video. Why are you running up the stairs, Sydney? Go out the front door! <laughs> For one thing, the characters are written really well. And just like how Wade Wilson is for Marvel comic books being meta as fuck, there is a lot of references to other slasher movies in Scream which makes it extremely meta. And as always, the kills are absolutely fucking hilarious. If a film wants to take itself seriously, goofy kills will take the experience out of the whole thing, but in this universe, the goofy kills actually worked and makes it incredibly hilarious to watch. I mean, with a lot of these other references to other slasher films, it, you can really tell that the killers in heart are actually horror fanatics, making the whole universe very believable. I mean, in their universe, they also have kind of a slasher series called Stab, which I will kind of be getting into it if I do anything that's even related to the Scream universe. So this film follows a woman called Sydney Prescott, whose mother was raped and murdered to death after having an affair with Billy Loomis's father. Sydney's half-brother, Roman Bridger, filmed the whole thing. She also had a run-in with her cousin who also wants to kill her, donning the ghost face mantle. It's really just one factor out of many that I feel like Sydney is getting the short end of the stick constantly. Anyway, Sydney Prescott was played by Nave Campbell. Ghostface, which is basically just a father death costume, is literally a mantle. You don the father death costume whenever you want to be Ghostface, which is intriguing because I could actually be Ghostface. All I have to do is just don the father death costume. In fact, everybody who dons the Ghostface mantle is technically a horror fanatic or a teenager. Ghostface is somewhat the only antagonist character that actually holds a gun and fires it to kill someone. My Michael Myers actually kills Kelly Meeker with a gun, but he doesn't really fire it, he just shoves it into her abdomen. You take my life, but I'll take yours too. You fire a musket, but I'll run you through. I mean, because we see slashers using improvised weapons to kill people all the time, I think putting a weapon, more specifically a firearm, in a slasher's hands would make them even more unique, because how many times have you seen a slasher shoot somebody? Also, what seems to be a very common express kill whenever you go as Ghostface is throwing someone off of a ledge. I mean, yes, this particular kill is goofy as fuck, but it works. Also, another extremely iconic kill from Ghostface is that he guts people like a fish. He actually followed through with a threat. I mean, for a horror comedy, especially a slasher and a comedy, this was absolutely fucking gruesome and I love every single bit of it. I'm sorry, my mistake. Ghostface is gender fluid because it's not only the males that wear the costume, it's also the females. Jeff Goodwin was in charge of the prosthetic makeups, but honestly, I just love how the disembowelment scenes were done using actual practical dummies. Wes Craven did an excellent choice using bearded skulls 
models as their practical effects designer. The sets look fucking superb. In fact, James A. Janice and Chelsea Garcia, two horror fanatics who actually run the Dead Meat channel, visited the set for the original Scream movie. I feel so left out. I'm not kidding, this is the original Loomis home from the 1996 Scream movie. The horror fanatic couple also made a cameo in Scream 5. Yeah, this is clearly the set from the Dead Meat podcast. This whole thing was kind of a jab to the constant requels we now see, creating another timeline. I know Stab isn't really a horror franchise within my universe, but honestly, I'm just gonna do it anyways because, you know, meta. Why the fuck does Chrome Face have a flamethrower? I mean, there is no need for this, like, holy shit. I mean, honestly, like, the <laughs> anyways, practical effects look amazing. Everything was filmed on set and on location. And with some of the best writing I've seen in both horror movies and comedy movies, I really couldn't help but immerse myself in the universe Scream was trying to convey. All right, now we're going to look at the meta moments of Scream. In Scream 4, Jill Roberts, after finding out that Sydney, her cousin, actually survived her encounter, said this. You just won't die, will you? Who are you? Michael fucking Myers? In reference to Sydney's incredible ability to take punishment, a lot like the slasher, Michael Myers. In the first movie, it's shown that the janitor is wearing the official outfit for Freddy Krueger. And I'm talking about the 1984 getup, the one without the green stripe on the sleeves. They have a horror movie night, like I'm so fucking jealous, where do I enroll in the school? And then there is also the there are certain rules one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie, which is basic fundamentals if you ask me. So basically, the rules are you can't lose your virginity, you also have to be sober because it actually extends to rule one, in which if you are high, you're more likely to have sex with someone. Third rule, the use of the phrase, I'll be right back, is basically jinx. If you say it, you will die. Jason Voorhees drowned due to neglect because the camp counselors were fucking, and for Michael Myers, well, you had to watch his sister get pegged in the cooch, if you know what I mean. Now, as a horror fanatic, Randy, I am deeply disappointed that you didn't actually follow through with what you said. I mean, just turn the fuck around. Ghostface is behind you. Or I'm just gonna turn around and Valasaurus the King's behind me. I'm so fucked. Okay, thank god he's not there. There was another part where they actually were talking about sequels and how they ruin movies and they started arguing about the line Ripley said during that power loader scene in Aliens. In the actual script written by James Cameron, it literally states, Get away from her, you bitch. It was entirely Wes Craven's birthday by the time I actually finished this recording. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you Wes Craven for all the positivity you brought upon the world directing horror movies. You are and will always be a legend when it comes to the horror genre. And with that out of the way, I think it's time to end the video right here and there. I'm Chirk Wanting, keep venturing to the unknown, signing the fuck off.